why the streets of Hong Kong become violent once again. Mass protest is nothing new in Hong Kong against China. Umbrella movement of 2014 as a symbol of protection against China's aggression and the largest demonstration against the extradition bill last year 2019 showed the fighting attitude of Hong Kong's residents. But this time, it seems that Hong Kong will be changed forever. This is Hong Kong, a special administrative region of China which was a British colony till 1997. British took lease Hong Kong for 99 years after the Second Opium War in 1898. They hand over the island to China at the midnight of 30 June 1997. Then at the stroke of midnight, history edged Hong Kong out of the army. A century and a half of imperial rule ended with the lowering of the Union flag. For China, this was a moment of pride, for their leaders an end to what they call an age of shame and humiliation. And now, after 23 years of handover, controversial national security law has created massive conflict between China and its special administrative region, Hong Kong. Hong Kong, an island in South China Sea, is divided from mainland China by the Sham Chun River. China, the world's fourth largest and mostly populated country, has a bad reputation for absence of human rights, freedom of speech, and political liberty. But China's special administrative region, Hong Kong, is way different than mainland China. Perhaps the most significant difference between mainland China and Hong Kong is the mainland is a communist and controlled by a single party, while Hong Kong has a limited democracy. Both shared the president of China as their chief of state. However, each has its own head of government. The premier is the head of mainland China, while the chief executive is the head of Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. The chief executive is accountable to the central people's government. While mainland China is run by national law, Hong Kong follows basic law, apparently which is at risk now. After the law passed, many democratic countries expressed their concern conflict with Hong Kong basic law. That if China continued down this path, we would reintroduce a new route for those with British national overseas status to enter the UK, granting them limited leave to remain with the ability to live and work in the UK and thereafter to apply for citizenship. Taiwan declared that they will give asylum if anyone feels feared of being targeted by China's national security law. Just weeks before the 23rd anniversary of the handover, Taiwan will continue to provide necessary humanitarian assistance to the people of Hong Kong. But Beijing strictly warns Taiwan not to mess up Hong Kong affairs. If you want to know about the crisis between China and Taiwan, you can watch our previous video, click on the card above or you can find the link in the description below. Under the Sino-Britain Joint Declaration, Chinese government gave special status to Hong Kong, which is known as One Country, Two System Policy. Hong Kong has special status under China's One Country, Two System Policy, which will expire in 2049 and Hong Kong will completely become the sole part of mainland China. Till then, China promised that they will let Hong Kong run the city as a democratic one. But did China keep their promise? Controversial security law for Hong Kong that critics fear will give Beijing more control over the semi-autonomous territory. Chinese Communist Party is proving that they hardly kept the promise. The largest pro-democratic protest in Hong Kong against the extradition bill in 2019 is a proof of that. The extradition bill could give China to extradite anyone under any offense in mainland China from Hong Kong. But as Hong Kong has a separate judiciary system, people of Hong Kong took it as a threat against their autonomous power. Chinese authority didn't welcome the 2019's protest as it was the largest demonstration in Hong Kong against their authority. It seems that 
they don't want to let Hong Kongers do such activities once again. And for that, China's National Assembly passed National Security Law for Hong Kong, which will allow China to interfere in Hong Kong directly. And if any part of this law contradicts with Hong Kong's basic law, national law will get priority. After the law passed, pro-democracy activist Joshua tweeted that it is the end of Hong Kong city as it was. Joshua, who is a pro-democracy activist since 2014, stepped down and disbanded his political party after the law passed. It seems that the people of Hong Kong have lost the battle against China for now and China clearly established dominance over the island. That's all for our today's episode. Did China kill the democracy of Hong Kong? What's your opinion? Let us know in comment box below.